You're listening to a LTA Sex podcast. LTA Sex. Sex positively. Welcome to Behind Closed Doors, the podcast where we talk about sex, relationships, and life completely unedited. I'm your host, Jerome Stewart Nichols, writer, sex and relationship coach, and creator of sexual lifestyle blog, LTASex.com. If you know me, you know I love talking about sex basically all the time. Uh, Behind Closed Doors is your chance to get a bit more raw and personal with me than ever before. Most often, I'll be talking to my partner and submissive bubby, but you'll hear me musing by myself or sitting in a room with any random person from time to time. Behind Closed Doors definitely isn't your average sex podcast, but it's not about the size. All that matters is how deep and arousing the conversation is. If you like the show, make sure to subscribe and tell your friends about it. You should also consider giving the show a review on iTunes. Make sure to check out LTASex.com for more from me. You can find more info on Behind Closed Doors at LTASex.com slash Behind Closed Doors. If you're one of those people using social media, you can also find me, LTASex, or Behind Closed Doors on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, SoundCloud, uh, all of that shit. Alright, enough of me talking about this bullshit. Let's get to the sex. I knew I was weird for a long time. I didn't know what that meant, like what weird means to anyone. I just knew that all the things that I was supposed to enjoy, I didn't enjoy, and all the things I wasn't supposed to, I thought were kind of interesting, and I wanted to pick at them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, as a woman, that's always a no-no. You're not supposed to enjoy anything about your sex life. That's your husband's job. That sounds horribly boring. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it didn't. I didn't get too many husbands like that. But I'm, well, clearly they're just not picking, right? Well, now I can't kick them away with a stick. What changed? Um, I think I stopped caring as much about other people's perceptions of what my sex life needs to look like. Um, mm-hmm. I think I learned how to defend myself because I've always been real quick with a comeback, but I didn't know how to defend what I liked before. I didn't know you could like that and not be ashamed of it. But now, you know, fuck what you heard. You can say something stupid if you want to and get your feelings hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't care if you're a conservative, if you're oh, a wave feminist, if you're a you know, my grandmother, whoever, if you got something stupid to say about my sex life, then we gonna have words. You know what? It's business. I love you so much right now. <laughs> oh, I don't even think you understand. <laughs> oh, but I have not smiled this hard and it feels like centuries. Anyways, before we get too much more into the show, since we are officially recording now, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience, because everybody who already knows who I am, Jerome Stuart Nichols, the host of this year's show. But who are you? My name is Jackie Griel. I am a sex educator living in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I have been involved in BDSM, kink, leather, fetish, alternative lifestyles for about 10 years. Uh, I do professional storytelling. I do work as a pro dom. I have a website, Perverts of Color. Uh, it's pervertsofcolor.tumblr.com. I'm sure there'll be a full place where that's set out later. But um, And that's just a, a Tumblr for anything related to people of kink and color uh, or people of color and kink. God, can you tell I'm tired today? <laughs> <laughs> um and I just really started doing this because I wanted to find people like me or more more people of color who were into this stuff because I just felt really weird all the time. And it just became my passion, and I love it. And I also am on the board of the Carter Johnson Leather Library, which is a 5013C library dedicated to preserving and archiving historical erotica. And so that's one of my passions as well. So, yeah, I'm just a big old pervert, and I love all this kind of stuff. And I love the politics behind it, and I love getting off to it. So that's me. All right. That sounds absolutely splendid. Nice to meet you. Thank you. 
<laughs> so we can pick up back where we were left off talking about. So you, did you do you have or have you had people in your life that have been sort of negative about your pervertedness? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I came from a sort of conservative background where women didn't talk about sex. And so my parents are very much against what I do. Most of my family is either against it or they don't. we don't discuss it because that's not something you discuss. It's something you do privately. Um, and I've had some partners who weren't supportive, but I just kind of got to the point where I don't care anymore, you know? Like the cool thing about kink is that you can create your own life. You can negotiate and find people who like to do whatever fucked up thing you like to do. And you guys build a relationship and you can live in that world. It doesn't have to be a fantasy. It can be your actual reality. So I just became determined to find people who also wanted the same things I want. So now I can surround myself with them. I don't need negative people in my life. It's not necessary anymore. It's really freeing, actually. So somebody else's opinion, regardless of they're my family or they're a stranger on the street, is not relevant anymore because they don't affect my actual day-to-day life. You know, the way I like to say that is if you're not fucking me, feeding me, or, like, paying any of my bills, then you can fuck off. Straight up and down. And if you're paying my bills, you can be involved in the bill. <laughs> I would send Verizon to your house and you can pay it online. You know. But you still have nothing to do with who I'm fucking. Don't make me go to church, please. <laughs> no, please go to church. This is this is chapel. We need, you know, the choir back there singing and swaying and giving the soul clap and everything. Oh, my God. You don't even understand. Like, I have so many dumb conversations about all these people. I mean, because real talk, if you really break it down, I'm not supposed to enjoy sex. I'm a woman. I'm black. I'm queer. You know, somebody's going to have an opinion about something I'm doing or how I'm fucking. So I'm supposed to hate myself and everything about me. And I don't have time for that. Do you know how much energy it takes to hate yourself constantly? A lot. For somebody else's benefit? Like, what? Please. I simply, I just, I, I shan't and I won't anymore. Like, I understand that struggle because I, being a, the only, like, out gay, black, atheist kid in school who was also friends with the goth girl in post-Columbine, Oak Park, Michigan, so basically yeah. bum fucking nowhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. a fucking mess. And I came to college with like all these fucked up attitudes about myself. I was so sad, I was depressed, I was tired all the time. And then I finally moved, and I got my own place, and I got time to think for myself. And then I just, like, my the amount of fucks I had just dissipated, and right. it got better. Seriously. And honestly, for me, the, the turning point was... Um, I, you know, I had some relationships that didn't end the way I wanted them to. You know, everybody knows that story. But at the same time, the only people who were there for me were was my leather family. It were the kinky people that I knew. They're the ones whose houses I crashed in and slept on their couch. They're the ones who talked to me all hours of the night when I was crying. They're the ones who really fulfilled that family obligation for me. And so it seemed pointless to try to stop being who I am for one family and lose the family that was actually supporting me in the process. So after that, I, it just ended. I was done. I'm not going to pretend, if, you know, I'm grown now. You know, if this is illegal, you'll never know about it. Like, <laughs> it's done. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's really what's most important there. Yeah, well, hey, I'm not going to rattle myself. I mean, uh, what is it, Fifth Amendment? Yes, I'll take that. I'll use that forever and ever. Um. And most of the stuff we do, that's the messed up part, is technically illegal. Like if you, you know, I have a, um, I have a DS relationship where I'm the mistress and he is my slave. And so no, slavery is not legal. And no, I'm not condoning slavery to be legal. Please don't turn my words. No, fuck all that. But my point being is that the dynamic we have, I'll, I can do things to him that are technically non-consensual because he doesn't like it, but not non-consensual because he agreed to the overall relationship. So right. in that sense, they are consensual. He just didn't like it, how I did it, or when I did it, 
or you know maybe why I did it, but he still agreed to a relationship where I had the freedom to do that, and that's the hot part. But right. people have opinions about it. You know, people don't understand it. I don't always understand it. I don't. I defy anyone to explain their relationship to another person who doesn't, who's never had a relationship like that. I, oh, I'll be damned if I can, because I, and, and we discovered this when we were talking last time, we are in very similar relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a puppy, I am his mister, uh, they, they know him as Bubby, that's his name. Um, oh. And we're also in an open relationship, and I still live in Michigan, I'm in Ypsilanti, Michigan, which is where um, my university is, or I'm in Ypsilanti, Michigan, which is where my university is. Mm-hmm. But it's next to Ann Arbor, which people know because of U of M, but like it's still middle of nowhere, Michigan. And I am definitely uh, the weird relationship to one out of everyone I know, even like the other gay people I know, which are f- f- few and far between. Right. Yeah. And, and it, it's just like people either come to you for all their relationship advice or they look at you like you're an alien from another universe and that you don't know how to speak English to you. <laughs> and thankfully, because of LTA sex, people do just come to me for a relationship advice, which is why I have so much content, because you would not believe the things crazy straight people get up to. Um, I'm sure I would. We could talk about that all day. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I gotta be honest with you, for as much shit as they give us, they really have some of the most weird ass, like, fucked up problems, and I'm just like, you know, one thing could fix this, and that's just, like, communication? Oh my god, it's, I'm serious. Y'all, if y'all take anything away from this, if you like the person you're dealing with, you should probably talk to them, and even if it's a hard conversation, just do it. Because the worst thing that happens is y'all break up. And sometimes that's the best thing. Mm-hmm. Straight up. Some of my best decisions was ending the relationship. Hallelujah. And honestly, in the relationships, that didn't just have to be romantic either. Because we was talking earlier about people in our life who are not supporting us. And those relationships are just as important. Seriously, it is. I mean, if I, 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 I value my partners who are just for play. But I value my partners who I can play with and I can have hard conversations with. And there's a level of honesty that Kink has made me realize. If I tell somebody my deepest, darkest fantasy, it's really sort of humbling and vulnerable, even as a mistress, you know? Sometimes, especially as a mistress, that's scary because then you get you have to be a bad guy sometimes in fantasy where you're the evil mistress. Because no one tells you how to deal with that afterwards when you just finish being an asshole for two hours. Now you gotta be nice again. <laughs> I know. Oh my god, the first like la- okay last summer when I was getting into DS and I first realized I had um, Dom space, which I had never experienced before in my entire life. Right. It just sort of happened. And I felt... I, I describe it as, like, evil, but it's yeah. really sort of, like, playfully destructive, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's like, I, I um, call him my prey a lot. I do, too. Yeah, because it's like, or, or I'll tell him I'm a bully. I'm like, I'm going to be a bully right now, and you can't do shit about it. And he just sort of sucks his teeth and goes, fine. Oh, my guy gets a spanking for that. <laughs> I hit him for everything. If I hit this motherfucker every time I needed to, Jesus. I'm getting back into hitting him every time I need to, and he's getting back into liking it <laughs> or or enjoying the hitting him when I need to. Um, I think I told you last time, but he had a seizure, lost his memory, and we're restarting our relationship, restarting DS. Right. And that has been wild. Yeah. That sounds like a lot. I mean, I I, I know that any time the relationship dynamic changes, it just sets off a whole new levels of communication you guys got to do. So definitely, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. And especially with him, we've been like chronicling on the show in the past few episodes. Um, we've been chronicling how he's relearning everything, mm-hmm. but everything in a way that we didn't really know before, which was that he literally had to relearn 
the lessons that came along with the memories and those experiences and those feelings. He had to do that stuff all over again. Wow. So when he came out, like when he first had a seizure, he didn't remember how to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. He didn't know what food was. He'd lost all his phobias, all his fears, all his worries about life. And then as time went on, he started to get really worried about life in a way that I'd never seen him worry before. Right. And he was freaking out and misbehaving and screaming and going manic and doing all this crazy shit. And over time, I've talked to him, talked to him enough, and we've tried enough things that we've sort of gotten him to the point where he's able to deal with his emotions now, and he's able to sort of, I guess, pick his battles yeah. <laughs> about where when he's going to yell or when he's going to scream. Wow. Well, my my mine is more so, you know, he. How do I put it? So he's a masochist to the level where I have to hurt him. Like, it is not a sometimes thing. It is like regular intervals. He needs to be hurt or his behavior will suffer. Yes. So if I'm not hurting him regularly, then it's going to affect our whole relationship. And so that's a new kind of play partner for me because I've had people I hurt occasionally or hurt, you know, on the clock, but maybe didn't hurt in regularly, like like clockwork almost. Mm. I can tell what behavior changes when I have not been beating his ass. Oh yeah, I've I've experienced that too. Before the seizure, I was doing that. It was like a at least once a week thing. We'd have a performance review, and he'd get his spankings for that, and then he'd be fine, and then we would move on. But uh, right. after that, after the seizure, like I wasn't doing that, and. His behavior was going wild because part of the thing is he didn't have any stress relievers. Right. And, and for him, the physical stress relief is what he needs. Yeah. So, but I'm no. definitely glad to get that back. Yeah, definitely. That's half the fun. I mean, I'll be honest. If I wasn't kicking his ass, man, that's my favorite part. It is. <laughs> I mean, the love is nice, too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, lo I, love, I love my little boy. And plus, he's my puppy, so essentially, he's my like companion. Yeah. So I'm yeah, very he's my. With him. He's got a lot of hats right now because he's also really new in terms of um, his identity. He's got a switch identity, but with me, it's always some sort of bottom identity, bottom slave boy. He's also a puppy. I, I think he reminds me of a pit bull, honestly, because he has that sort of pit bull. Uh, mentality, the goofy faces, and you know, but it's the masochist that was the hardest part because he doesn't, you know, combat sports, and he's a big guy, and you know, if you beat, you hit a big guy, you can't just punch him. You got to get in there because they're like you a brick. Do. Yeah, and so that's a workout for me. So I'm beating him up and I'm sweating. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I've had to, I've had to come up with a creative ways to solve that. Like, I have, I for him, I have to use canes. Or other thin in instruments because he, like the wide paddles don't work. Even we had this, um, it's like a pipe dream bamboo rod. It's about an inch and a half thick on all sides and about 16 Ooh. inches long. And it is wonderful. And it makes this, oh, like the sound is just, it's like a, this hard snap that is just so satisfying. But even that he enjoys too much. So right, right. We had, we went down to the farmers market and we were so lucky to come across this lady selling like four foot bamboo rods for I think it was fifty cents. Nice, they suck. I was like, oh yeah, he's not gonna like this, but I'm going to love it. Ah, <laughs> I love it. I think that's the coolest part is that you have somebody who will trust you to do all that horrible stuff you thought about doing and then you felt bad exactly. about thinking about doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When did you first, like, start exploring your pervertedness? Oh, that's a... Mm. Um, well, when I was really young, I always knew I liked it when boys did what I told them to do instead of me being submissive to them. Mm. 
because that was a whole big thing in my religion growing up is that the woman is submissive to her husband. Women are generally submissive, submissive, submissive. That was the theme. So I, mm. I had a lot of training to be submissive, and I'm not very good at that. So, <laughs> so I mm. knew I'd feminizing men. But I just thought I was being an asshole, like, you know, ha-ha, my panties on, ha-ha, that's fun. And, you know, guys will, straight guys at least, at that time I was mostly involved with straight men. Straight men will let you put panties on them if they think you'll have sex with them. They will. Oh, so they'll do almost they anything. Will. Oh, my God, they love it. They won't tell anyone, but they fucking love it. They do. Oh, my God, panty wearers. There are so <laughs> many straight, submissive men who just, they either don't know or they're just like so scared of coming yeah. out in their full glory, but they love to be under the foot of a strong woman. Oh my god! And a lot of them, the you know, they may not be straight guys, but they're just not ready to deal with that either. Because I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I question how many of the straight men I met who were actually straight. I just put it that way. Hey, that's understandable. I I know that in my my travels as a gay man, um, I have come across many a uh, quote unquote straight men who. I'm honestly, I, I honestly, I feel like they were, um, there was just something about the way that they enjoyed being under my thumb that seems just a little bit too engulfed, like they're too engulfed in it to be just straight men. That seems like such a narrow title for them to be labeled as. Yeah, a lot of them are so fucking scared, and I get it, you know, because there's a, to some extent, it's it seems like a life or death choice depending on where you live and who yeah. you know. So I'm not knocking anybody for it. I just know who I meet in the dark corners <laughs> when they call me. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the types of guys that you're mostly hanging around with now? Um, I only get involved with men who are queer or bisexual. Um, it's just, it's it, for me. I need someone who's not going to fetishize my sexuality, and that's usually somebody else who has a similar sexuality. Mm. Um, you know, I've been involved with people of different genders, women, you know, cis women, trans women, non-binary people. So none of that's a real issue for me because I figure whatever you got, you tell me how you want me to touch it, you tell me what you want me to call it, and I'll work it out. Like if I really like you, then I'm gonna be want to get invested in your stuff, whatever your stuff is. So that's never been a huge concern for me. But it, in general, I don't really get involved with men, um, cis men, uh, at this point. My boy is a cis guy, but he's a queer guy, and you know I like to beat on him mainly. That's my main thing with him. <laughs> really good at that. <laughs> oh my goodness, I. My guy, he's, I find him interesting because well, he, he, well, yeah, yeah, of course that's good. I don't want to find him boring. That'd be terrible. But, <laughs> like, I, I find him interesting because he is so submissive. Right. And yet, no matter what, he gets what he wants. <laughs> And it's funny because I've been dealing with this thing where, like, now that he's being more submissive, he's still asking for what he wants because that's what that's one of the rules is that, that that's what he has to do so that he doesn't get crabby. He's like, you're not doing anything to me. You haven't asked me to do anything to me. You, I would if you asked. Right. Open your mouth. And that, that had got us into trouble before, but now he's being better about that. But he's asking for, like, everything all the time, and it, I'll, sometimes I'll say no, just because I don't want to be nice to him all the time. Right, you have to. Like, if you don't, you'll spoil him. I know, and I do spoil him, because he's my puppy, and that's terrible. But, I like, know. as long as he's not pooping on the rug or anything, I'm generally fine with it. <laughs> I know, I spoil mine, too. and it's Because it's, you're just so excited to have a partner who can really get you on that level, you know? Yeah. And so the things about me is I also have a mistress and her name is um, Miss T and she lives in Detroit and she's amazing because technically I'm a switch. I do enjoy submitting. It's usually with women 
And, um, you know, it's just an amazing dynamic as well, too, because she can kick my motherfucking ass. (laughs) Real talk, this woman's got, like, MMA fighter hands. Like, do not fuck with Miss T. Take that with you, everyone. (laughs) <laughs> if I ever run into anybody in my 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 Michigan travels named Miss T, I will make sure not to fuck with her. Yeah, she ain't the one. I've I've actually never been submissive really to anyone. I I I don't know that I have yet met somebody who would make me submissive. Uh, it may be. I don't know. Maybe I just don't want it. I I don't think I do want. It. But I don't know. I'd like to give it a try at some point. I mean, it's a good stress reliever. Not only that. I mean, she she's great at giving me that catharsis feeling I need, and she's capable of handling me at whatever my level is at, which I really love. Hmm. For 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 me, I use my other partner Noah for that. <laughs> He's, well, hey, he's also submissive, but he's a pansexual cis guy. Mm-hmm. He's super adorable, and he just loves me to fuck him into the bed. And that's really sometimes all I need in life. Hey, you ain't got to tell me twice. <laughs> uh, I, I, what... You know, this is a good place to, to actually expand upon stress relievers for doms. Because i got to be honest with you, it is so much fucking stress. Like, I, as I'm sure you know, it to, to be in control all the goddamn time. Yeah, it is. It's a lot. People don't realize it. That's why when people are like, oh, I have six slaves on the internet. I'm like, who the fuck cares? One, that's a whole lot of upkeep. I don't have time for six slaves. Nah, I ain't but time for that. Up and down. That is way too much work. Like six people I have to check in with, like at least a couple times a week. Are you kidding me? Please kill me. That's way too many people. Yeah, I don't even want that many kids. I don't want that many family members. I don't right, want that many dogs. Yeah, it's like if you, like that's a lot of responsibility. That's not impressive to me. That to me that sounds like there's probably two or three who are getting most of your time. Mm-hmm. And everybody else just gets neglected or they're your pen pal. Oh, I could see that. Yeah, so, you know, that's just me. When I think about the actual amount of work it takes to have one person, I am not impressed by all the people in your entourage. And I'm like, don't get me wrong. I would like maybe two or three. But after that, I just feel like mm, I don't know if I would like to divide, devote 40 hours a week to managing the people I'm fucking around with. That just seems like way too much work. Yeah, I am far, far too lazy for that. And, yeah, I'm both lazy, and I just honestly, I want submissives to just do shit. I don't want to have to constantly be watching over you. So if I have to be checking in with you all the goddamn time, I really just have no interest in it. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, I, I mean, honestly, when I think about Polly, I consider my friends part of my partners, my family... And the people I have sex with, the people I play with, all of them are my partners. They get divided up based on how much of my energy they require. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't really matter if you're a partner I have sex with or a partner I don't have sex with. If they require a certain amount of energy, they go in a certain space. And if I can't give them that, then they either have to go lower on on my list or, you know, be prioritized differently some kind of way. So that's just... I don't see myself having many more people unless we all lived in the same house, and I don't want to live with everybody. No, God, no. I honestly, I can't wait till we fucking move out of this place. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love this apartment. It's right in downtown. It's great price, whatever. But there's only, like, one be- one bedroom and an office. I give mm-hmm. him the office to, be like, get the fuck out of my face, but... Um, I would like for him to be able to like sleep somewhere else. Right. Sometimes, because he is a bed hog, and also we are both large people, and while we have the queen size bed, he is like 250 pounds, and I'm like 340 pounds, and it's just, it's just like I need space. I need you to move. Just just leave. Yeah, definitely. That's no, I don't need you on my face. I tell him to get out all the time. I'm like, don't you have somewhere to go? Can you, like, go read a book at the park or something? Like, please. Oh, my gosh. 
And that was that was honestly part of what made like at least the first three months after the season so hard. It's because he was latched onto me like a baby duckling. Yeah. And yeah, I that's... just oh god. It made me so excited. And it was bad because I knew that I couldn't tell him not to because he needed to be led around like that during that period of time. So I just had right. to deal with it, but I am so glad it's over. Well, I'm glad for you too. You sound like you just breathed. <laughs> God dang. It this is it's only been he's only been functional or like livable with for like the last five weeks maybe. Yeah. Wow. His seizure is... was in it was October twenty fifth. So it's been, you know, five, six months. Wow. Well, I'm glad you guys are doing so well. I mean, damn, that's a lot of pressure, too. People don't realize, like, if you're the dom and you collar somebody, like, they might need to go to the hospital one day or, you know, something could happen to somebody, somebody gets sick. Like, that's stuff you all got to plan for together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially with this crazy-ass family. Hey, Fox, News. Look- Fox News bastards. <laughs> so, Yeah. You're going to love this dirty picture when I'm done. Oh, my God. I can't wait. I'm so excited. (laughs) Have you – okay, so have you ever had to deal with, like, race and kink issues? Constantly. Okay. Because I feel – I honestly, sometimes when I'm out in public and I'll, like, have to snatch him up real quick because he's stepping out of line, I – I always get worried when people like look at us, and it's bad enough that we're a gay couple doing it, and it's also bad enough that we're in Bumfuck, Michigan, an interracial couple doing it, but it's like also not hitting him or something. Right. It's true. So we tend to do a lot of like go, go over somewhere real quick, get away from me, go stand in that corner. Mm-hmm. Like, because people usually don't mind if, if you just tell them to go away and stand somewhere. And then his ass will go stand in the corner looking dumb. And I will tell him to come back when he's done, you know? But you can't mm-hmm. embarrass him in public and then think you're not going to get dealt with. Exactly. That is one of my number one rules. You do, like, you, if you need to act a fool, you better wait your ass until we get behind our own doors. Thank you. But if we out in public, I will have to check you real quick. Yeah, just like if your dog does something crazy at home, you know, it may not be a big deal, but if you're on the dog park, no, you can't be acting crazy at the dog park. No, you cannot. Absolutely fucking not. Like, and and I've also had to deal with, like, this weird race thing with, like, his family, because, like I said, they're a Fox News family, and by Fox News, I mean racist, upper-middle-class white people who think they're poor for some reason, even though they have, you know, two cards on lease, and they own their house, and got retirement funds, and... All this other bullshit. They go on vacations all the goddamn time. Right. And I like his mother is the absolute she's she's basically like Bill's above or some shit. Yeah. She refers to the place where I live. It's like the one of the high points in the city. Mm-hmm. She refers to this area as Monkey Mountain. Oh my god, that is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's so bad. Oh my god, that is the best. And I'm just like, I I mean, I appreciate your style, but you're such a bitch. I hate you so much. (laughs) That is fucking hilarious, though. You gotta give her two points. I appreciate when your racism is, like, at least witty or interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I've been a nigger so many times, that's not even fun anymore. Like, if it's you. Can, not. If you monkey mountain, that's hilarious, though. Like, kudos, good for her. And, like, his growing up was so sheltered. So, like, the first. Before the seizure, in the first part of a relationship, I had to get him from being, like, the sheltered, church going, previously homeschooled 19 year old. He was 19 when I met him. And then. I had to get him from that to being like a not as socially awkward <laughs> functional human being who could live on his own and that has been a great trial but I am so happy it's happened. Yeah, I'm serious, I understand. I only recently um let 
uh, my slave move in because mm -hmm. I was so serious about I don't want to be your mom I don't want you to feel like because of this DS you can't be a self-sustained person just because I own you doesn't mean you aren't an individual who has to have certain life skills. Exactly. So when he moved in, oh, I will ride his ass now. I don't even know if he want to live here now. <laughs> I've been I've been riding Bubby so hard because, it, you know, like again, he had to learn, relearn all the lessons, and one of the lessons he had to relearn is that like stuff takes work, and yeah. nothing's gonna happen if you don't do anything. So you have to get up and do something, even when you don't know exactly what you're doing. Right. And so it, I, I, he was going to go to culinary school, but when he got out of the hospital, he wasn't doing anything for that. Like even after he'd gotten his memory back and blah, 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 he still wasn't doing anything for it. So I started pushing him about it, and eventually it came up that he didn't actually just he didn't actually want to go. Oh, he decided on that because his family always told him that he needed to be in a more masculine position. Right. Which is why he was going to try out for the army also, you know, to get away from his family for a long ass time. Yeah. Um, but because he had, like, asthma as a kid, he couldn't. Then he went to uh, be an aviation mechanic, and he dropped out of that because he fucking hated it. And then he just worked at Walmart for a year, and then he decided on culinary school. He's still doing culinary work. He has a job at this restaurant uh, near our house, but he's now, like, the middle middle cook, and he's been there since July of last year, so eight, eight months or so. Nice. Good job. Yeah. I know. And I was like, you see, that's, that's, what, that's what you do. And when he had his seizure back in October, he was just doing part-time on, like, salads and things. Mm -hmm. uh, in the kitchen, sometimes dish room, and hosting at the same time. But since his seizure, he has gone from doing that, and he stopped hosting altogether, and now he's middle shelf, he's got raised, and he is uh, doing really well. So, yay, progress. Oh, yay. Skills. Good job, puppy. I know, I'm so proud of him. I made him a cookie. <laughs> oh my god, don't even get me started. Mine's got a food play fetish, like a legit fetish. Into, related with food, any kind of way, fucking food, rubbing it on you, it's just a mess. Mine so, has yet to be allowed to explore that, but I absolutely know that if I came to him with like a watermelon with a hole cut in it, he would stick his dick in it and just be so blissfully happy. Oh my god, I'm so jealous. I want a penis now. <laughs> I would do that. That's, I mean, don't get me wrong, it sounds wonderful. The other one I heard of was like a warm cantaloupe. Like you put it in the microwave for a little bit. I actually went to a party where a friend of mine had sex with a large melon. Okay. And uh, apparently it was a lot of fun, but it was cold and a mess. Oh, well, that sounds terrible. So, so maybe warm it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Warm. I don't want to stick my dick in like a cold, sloppy mess. Like that's horrible. I guess it was whatever you're into, really, at this point. I, I, well, yeah, but like I just, oh wow. I mean, eh, you know, I've done. We've all been horny, right? <laughs> I've done worse. Exactly. I was like, you know, that sounds bad, like in theory, but when you think about it, what have we actually done to get off in the past? Lots hey, of things. If I can put a condom on it, I've probably had sex with it. There you go. There you go. He had a wrench, like a stainless steel wrench that he used to use. Oh, that doesn't sound fun at all. It doesn't, but apparently he really liked the hard handle. It felt good on his prostate, so... You know, steel was really good for prostate, so I believe him. I, hey, and I'm like, hey, he chose a body safe material. He didn't. He wasn't sticking the like gear end into his butt. So basically, he's doing everything right. As long as you wash it, I guess. Hey. Yep. I mean, we still have it here. He still uses it from time to time, but. <laughs> now it's just sentimental value. Yeah, of course, because he, he was. This was back when he was living with his, you know, Fox News family, and if they would have found a sex toy, they would have like crucified him and then said that it was God's plan or some shit. Right, the whole speech. 
of course, the same fucking speech over and over and over again. Yeah, I've heard it. Mm-hmm. They, oh, God, they're so fucking terrible. Now now I'm thinking about how terrible they are because they caused a problem with us uh, uh, on his birthday, which was Monday. He turned 22. Uh, it's They sent him cards. They're, he hasn't been talking to them since he moved back to my house after the seizure. Okay. Uh, because they are terrible. They tried to, they really freaked him out with, like, God right when he got out of the hospital. They were doing things like telling him that I was his roommate and um, trying to convince him that he should move in with them and that he should love them and blah, blah, blah. It was this really abusive situation that I'm glad I was able to get him back out of. Wow, yeah. Uh, and that's the reason why I had him move in after, like, four months of dating in the first place is because he would go home, get so stressed out and freaked out that I would have to deal with it for two days. Right, yeah. No, I hear you. Uh, so they were doing all these things, and then he stopped talking to them, and then they sent him birthday cards. The birthday cards were, I don't know how they managed to do this, but they found $5 Hallmark cards that said the exact words that they have said to him, which he is so tired of hearing, which is, all I ever wanted is for you to be happy. And I, 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 I know we don't see each other as much as we would like, but, you know, I'll always love you. And it's just like this bullshit, non-loyal, I'll love you as long as you behave exactly the way I want you to bullshit, that I'm just like, he's never going to love, like, stop, just stop. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Like, who do you want in your as a, with a relationship? Him or the idea of him? Yeah. They definitely want the idea of him. Absolutely. Well, that's a shame. Unfortunately, I know that story, but I I hear you. It's really fucking hard because the people who should love you regardless, when they are conditional with it, it just affects your life in so many ways that you don't even know until you try to live it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know that I was so privileged because I have to be honest, l listening to like his stories about his family, like I had a problematic childhood, but I absolutely I realize now I was absolutely loved unconditionally, right? Which I know a lot of people did not have. Like I I had a mother who once said that you know I was going to go to hell because I was gay, but. She never kicked me out. She was never cruel to me about it. I asked her a question, and she gave me an answer. Right. And that was the only time she ever said it. And in her older years, she's become much more accepting of it. Right. Um, so it's basically a non-issue. Well, that's good, at least. I mean, you are a very blessed person, then, definitely. Mm-hmm. It's it's giving me uh, helping him through his parental issues has given me a new perspective on on my life. It's, well, that's inter really cool. it's interesting how subs can uh, teach the Dom some things sometimes. Yeah, he gives me lots of great insights, and sometimes I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? But other times I'm like, wow, that was really, you know, useful information. I guess it just depends, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, his experience plus my experience usually ends up helping each other. I think that's when you know when it's healthy, when he can bring you something and you can bring him something. Yeah. And you both benefit. Yeah. Because honestly, I he started this DS thing because he this is something he wanted to try out and he asked me to try out Puppy Play. And from okay. there, I sort of like uh, blossomed my own love of it. <clears throat> and being with him has sort of taught me that I was way more adventurous than I thought. Right. Uh, I'm way more kinky than I thought. I can enjoy being cruel and sadistic without feeling bad about it. And a lot of the tasks that I have set for him to do on a daily basis are really just, like, maintaining me because I'm sort of bad at maintaining myself. Hey, <laughs> so, yeah. so he has to give me uh, my medications in the morning. He has to make sure that I eat. Um, he keeps track of my appointments, and he goes through my emails, and he... Um, make sure that the house is clean. Like these basic things that are simple to do but can be really difficult when you don't have the attention or you can't get out of bed because you're so depressed or right, exactly. you know, you're working on a million things. 
Yeah, that's pretty much what he does is his, his housework. I mean, that's what I need the most. You know, I can always find somebody who wants to eat my ass. I can't find somebody who wants to help me with my laundry. And he loves doing the laundry, even though he has to, like, drag a 50-pound suitcase, like, four blocks. Oh, poor baby. I know. I think of it as, like, a gift to him because he wants a bigger ass, and I feel like that's a gl great glute exercise. Oh, well, then you're really um, doing you both a favor, honestly. Yeah, like we get fresh linens, and, you know, he gets a juicy booty, which I am not, absolutely not opposed to. Oh, yeah, that sounds horrible. <laughs> He's a, um, we were talking about food earlier. He's also a gainer. Okay. And he's been, when I met him, he was, I want to say like 190, 200, something like that. Mm -hmm. So he's put on a lot of weight. And I have to be honest with you, he looks so much cuter now. Oh, my God. I love chubby boys. I know. Oh, my God. His, I love his cute little belly. And, like, he used to have negative ass. And now he's got this <laughs> chubby little booty that is just, like, so fun to grab. Like, you can get a good handful of it. It's fucking great. Oh, my God, that sounds the cutest. <laughs> it's like, and I love it because, like, his uniform at home is naked or in a jock strap. Nice. So everything is just right in the world with this little adorable thing running around my house. I say little, he's huge, but <laughs> he's adorable nonetheless. No, I get it. Mine, um, he he likes to wear panties a lot, so I usually have him in mm -hmm. panties. And, uh, I, you know, he runs around the house and... Mine makes noises, so I'll know he's in the house because I'll just hear him humming or whistling or doing yes! jig. It's the cutest. He'll be like, like he'll be just like I'll walk into the kitchen and he'll have his headphones on, and he'll have his like his voice changes when he's in bubby mode. This is what we call it, mm -hmm. and he'll be all, he'll be like, I'm a baby, baby, I'm a baby, 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 and I'm like, oh my god, I just want to rub your belly. I oh, so no. Cute. Um, I know, it's like, I want to rub your belly, and then I want to, like, you know, slap you. Yeah, both at the same time. I know. Actually, I can't wait for him to get home. He's not going to be home for, like, another hour and a half. But I think I need to set up those restraints I just reviewed. They're um, made by Pipe Dream. They're, like, uh, over-the-door restraints. Oh, yeah, I know the ones you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, those are great. I love them so much. Yeah, I mean, I don't do the restraints as much anymore with the, um, I mean, I have some shackles that he wears because he really likes steel, mm -hmm. and uh, he wears those a lot just because they're fun as hell, but I don't really do too much with the uh, restraints because you ain't going to hulk out and break my bed. <laughs> I, I have. I actually have had a couple sets of under-the-bed restraints, but because we're both fat and we prefer to just, like, live a very casual, comforting life, we right. just have, like, two mattresses stacked on top of each other on the floor, and that's mm -hmm. really difficult to do. I mean, if it works, it works. Yeah, but you, you can't get the restraints under there, really, because the mattresses will bend because he is a, you know, 240-pound, you know, strong, corn-fed boy. Right, yeah, that's true. So you just so you're gonna try the ones over the bed though, because that should get you good. The the ones over the door, the ones over the door are so perfect because we live in an old house, so we have still uh still hinges and our door is solid wood, mm -hmm. and the way he has to pull is pulling into the room, not out of the room. So okay. everything just sort of like lines up perfectly for our for our bedroom door to become like an A frame. <laughs> to tie him up in his bed cam or, or fuck him really hard or just leave him there for my in visual enjoyment. Well, if you ever need support, just let me know. I will definitely watch. <laughs> you know what? You you may be able to see them online sometime because we do have like this huge catalog of like videos from our exploits and we've been thinking about selling them or like putting them on XTube just for fun or something. Oh my god! Hell, starting at Tumblr. Don't tease me. <laughs> I mean, you know, it may happen, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he's a um, mine's is a voyeur too, so I have to keep him off the internet because he would have his fucking asshole on Facebook if I didn't stop him. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, like I, I, yeah, he. 
he absolutely loves if I if I like tie him up and blindfold him and then take pictures of him or take video while I'm spanking him or you know if we're doing like anal training or something he loves just being able to like review it right and I do too it's sort of like this snapshot of the dumb headspace because I watch myself and I'm just like oh this is so hot <laughs> I always feel mean when I see myself. I'm like, do I always look that mean? Is this what I look like? I look... I have, like, this blank sort of expression on my face. Mm -hmm. But it's creepy because periodically I'll smile, but it's not my normal smile. It's mm -hmm. just, like, this slight twitch of my lip. And I look like a serial killer. <laughs> like it's... Well, that's hot to some of us. I know. It's really... I, he likes it. Clearly. It, it's, he says it scares him, and he likes that. And I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, it sounds hot, though. I mean, I, I'm all into the, the Dom as a villain kind of thing, mm. where you're the bad guy, and you got to kind of fight against him and try to get away. Mm -hmm. That's hot. That was one of the first things we did was actually, like, we would wrestle. Yeah, I love wrestling. And, like, I would be able... I would always always be able to get him, and I'm pretty sure that it's because he just wanted me to wanted me to get him. Well, of course, yeah. He's like, oh my god, I, I fell down. Please don't take advantage of me. Oh, oh, oh no, I'm not wearing any underwear. What, whatever shall I do? Oh my god, don't even get me started. He'll be, he'll just like be walking around in that sort of way that he knows I like, and he'll look at me like it'd be a shame if something happened right now. It's like, alright, I caught the hint, thanks. Thank you. Or, like, I'll be sitting on the couch working, and he'll just come sit next to me and just, like, lay, or, like, lay down on the, floor, for, on the floor in front of me and just start moving his booty. And I'm like, I know exactly what you're doing, and I'm going to pause my work because you clearly need to be t dealt with. Right. I know. They, they try to seduce you with their submissiveness. And it's, it always works. It always works. It does. <laughs> it's so fucking adorable. So, yeah, that's my boy. God help me. Please pray for me, y'all. I, um, I, I think it's interesting, the, the, the sort of dichotomy of it being both cute and evil or villainous or dark at the same time. But before I, before I was uh, experiencing it for myself, I, I hadn't known about the sweet side right. of pink. It's... it's Surprising and yet familiar. Yeah, I mean, I think of it like, you know, you have those friends where you fuck with each other all the time. Maybe you play pranks or whatever. And you guys are still friends, even though you might be really mean to each other sometimes. And that's true. I've ha I have had a lot of those relationships. It's true. Like, I have some friends. They are just assholes to me. But they're my friend and they can get away with it. Because that's our relationship. Like, I agreed to that. I don't know when exactly, though. I couldn't tell you when, but it happened at some point. You know what? I feel like you might need to renew that friendship license at some point. Yeah, I thought about it, but I eat all their food, so it kind of works out. Oh, I mean, if they're feeding me, yeah, we're cool. Yeah. It's all, we it's did, all we discussed that earlier. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Here, you know, we're talking about our submissives. And here comes my bubby texting me because he's getting ready to get out of work and he has to um, wag his tail and say, hi, Mr. I love you. Come Aww. Back. I know. That's adorable. How long have you and your, your slave? Huh? Yeah. Slave. How long have you and your slave been together? Well, um, we got together. It's, it'll be almost two. It'll be two years in August. Um, so I know in terms of DS, it's kind of fast because you know there's rules for all of this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm more. I take my relationships like whatever feels natural is what needs to happen. Yeah. And I did not even want to be the mistress. In fact, I tried desperately to find another title for us. I was, you know, I, I was like, 
Oh, could be play partners, you know, we could be friends, like, what do you want to do? And he's like, you're my mistress. And I was like, well, we could do this, we could do that. He's like, nope, you're my mistress. It was kind of like, get over it. And for me, he he wanted to be uh, owned. He wanted me to be his owner. Uh, but right. I, I didn't like that idea at first. It didn't feel, I guess, lovey. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel personal or intimate, really. So I told him, you know, Mister, I like that. Right. It seems sort of kind and relationshipy without being too cutesy. No, I get it. Yeah, I didn't want it either. I mean, it it happened naturally. I can't take it back. You know, I pretty much bought him. He's mine. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, these backies. I know. that. That's another weird thing that I realize has happened in the progression of our relationship. Uh, is like, I, I, I was wondering recently why I've stayed with him through all this shit. Because, like, when he had a seizure, we'd only been together eight months. Right. And at that time, it was... I don't know why it didn't occur to me to just be like, well, um, I'm going to let you take care of yourself, but I'm going to see you later. Right. And I was looking back at it, and I realized that he's mine now. Yeah. He's like a part of my life, a part of my family, I guess. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know that he'll ever really be able to leave that, at least. No, it's true. Like, at some point, you guys reach it where it's like, I don't know how I can do this without you because people don't realize it, but it's the submissive that I think um, sets the tone for the relationship by their level of commitment. Yes, you need a good leader, but if you don't have somebody willing to do the grunt work, then you're not going to have anything. And exactly. Yeah, and so at some point, you realize, like, I need you now. You've been doing this so long. I'm not even sure where my stuff is. You organize everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That was the worst. Yeah. That was the worst when he was in the hospital because I had to come home and I had to find his stuff and I had to find my stuff. And I was like, you know what? I haven't cleaned my own house in, like, four months. I don't right. know where anything is. I'm so scared. I know. He's got to come home just so you know where your shit is. But it's worse because he doesn't have his memory. So how is he going to fucking know? <laughs> oh, my God. That's true. That that was a mess. Like we 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 had to go through like finding his uh, pin number, which he was able to pull out of his head, which was great. That was useful. But we had to go through like email passwords and blah blah. blah. It was so much work. Wow. I, well, I, I that's your man. I know that's my man, and I do what I need to. Which is why when we're done talking, I'm going to go pay some bills. Because, you know, he just put his check in my bank account. So, <laughs> no. He can right. to God, I took his money, too. Hey, you got paid for yes. <laughs> I did. I, told him early on. I said, do you know what it is? It, it's so much involved in taking care of another person. Like, honest to God, taking care of them 24-7. Mm -hmm. Like, his bills, I gotta make sure you pay him. We trying to eat in here, so you gotta put some groceries in here. It's like Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I took his check. I said I'm not a gold digger, but I want all your money. Thank you. And I do give him allowance from time to time. And if he wants to go out somewhere, like if he has to go on a date, I'll just sit put some money in his account and then he can have that until it's gone or whatever. But Yeah, I get his money from the cash. I don't he don't get no money in no account. He get cash. I don't fuck with him like <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if it's in his account at any point during like the day I can just be like well you're done spending money I'm going to take this back oh, and see, it's over see I give him bus money plus cash and then he gets where he got to go <laughs> hell no I'll give him money I have to be honest that is, made, I, that is that right there that just that one thing of me taking over the money has removed a lot of stress from our life because it has. he's shit with money He's absolutely terrible with it. 
Oh my God! Don't get me started. You don't even really want to have this conversation with me. He's so <laughs> bad at it, so bad. I mean, he's never really had to go grocery shopping. Just that in and of itself. Yeah, he's so never he, had to pay rent. Yeah. So what are you doing right now? You in the grocery? Oh my God! I was so mad at him the other day. We went to the grocery store. I told him to buy some apples. This motherfucker gonna buy apples that were already pre-sliced in a bag. Oh, why are you Lord. buying pre-sliced apples, bitch? Like, what are you doing right now? Like, <laughs> why am I spending like eight dollars more? Just, just give me a knife. Oh my God, I was so mad. He was just like, "Well, sometimes we don't have a knife." I'm like, "You better bite the an apple and shut the fuck up." What's wrong with you? Thank you. Oh my God. What is wrong with what's wrong with the apple? Oh my God, it's good for your teeth. Everything. I love it. No, mm-hmm. I know. I was so mad about that pre-sliced apple. I'm so mad you brought room by me. <laughs> No, like, I completely understand. I had to teach him how to shop at a grocery store. He had never been to a dollar store before. He'd never been to, like, um, a, a, a thrift store. Really? Yeah. That's all we did was thrift stores. I'm a thrift store queen. You don't even know how to talk. I love thrift stores. Everything in my room right now is Target and thrift stores. And me, it's like Walmart, thrift stores, and random stuff from online. Exactly. Yep. And we have this, actually, we have this very small thrift store called Thrift Store um, right across the street from my house. And they, every four months, they'll have like an end-of-season clearance where you can get an entire bag of stuff for $2. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Like... I don't ever want to move unless I'm going to move someplace that's this convenient. My bank is across the street. His job is across the street. Uh, our, our favorite uh, bar is across the street. And then we have like a 24-hour Coney Island two blocks away. Nice. I can get with that, down with that. That's what's up. Yeah. And it's right by the bus station. So that's great because, you know, we don't have a car anymore. Perfect. Well, not mm-hmm. the car, but perfect about the location. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it, it, But... The money thing with him, he actually likes it yeah. because I, he gets to look at what I do and he gets to learn how to do it himself because that's the other thing. I don't want to get sick and then like not be able to have our bills get paid. Right. So I'm teaching him how to shop. I'm teaching him how to um, budget. I'm teaching him how to re- recognize purchases he absolutely does not me- need to make for any reason or like – Recognizing that a price for something is just clearly too high. Right. Yeah. Instead of just buying whatever he wants. You know, or whatever looks good or whatever. We were in the grocery store. He tried to buy sushi. I'm like, you don't need no damn sushi. What are you doing right now? Just get some fish. Not no 20 dollars thing of sushi. Hell no. You better get some fish sticks. Stop playing with me. <laughs> uh, like, honestly, though, if they had that sushi uh, fish, like, if they just had that as a story... I would not ever be able to buy enough of it. Like, just give me, like, 80 pounds of fatty tuna, and you can call me in a week. I mean, I love sushi, but I'm not going to try to pretend I can cook it in my house. Oh, I just want the tuna. That's it. I, uh, you don't, No rice, no nothing. <laughs> just the tuna. Just the tuna. I, I don't know why it's so good to me. Every There's this, uh, uh, about 10 minutes away from the house, there's, like, this uh, all-you-can-eat Asian food buffet that also mm-hmm. has all-you-can-eat, like, hibachi grills and all-you-can-eat sushi and sashimi, and, like, fried foods, and soup, and I'm just like, I'll take a plate of everything, and then a plate of everything, and I'm going to go sit down, and I'll see you guys later. Right, exactly, and then I'll eat it, and then I'll eat some more, and then I'll be gone. Exactly. I actually took him there for his birthday. It was the first date I had with his partner, his other partner, so mm-hmm. my metamor, I think that's what you would call him. Yeah. Uh, so that was interesting. It's turning up that Bubby's going to be a little bit of a dom to that kid, guy who's older than him by a year but way less emotionally mature. But right. he's as infatuated and as, um, it seems, uh, uh, devoted to being told what to do. That's kind of hot. Mm-hmm. Because now I feel so, I'm, sort of, I'm starting to feel like a, a daddy dom. I'm like I'm yeah. 27, but I, I, I'm starting to feel like you know I've got some shit in order. I'm teaching my boy how to take care of his boy. That's a, that's so cute. That's a lot to do too. That's a lot of responsibility on you. 
It is. But I'm not actually actively taking care of his boy. I'm just like, this is another lesson that Mr. is teaching Bubby because, you know, this is just our life. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's just our life. God help us. And I like our life. I do. I do. It's much less stress. I've never, I can't do vanilla relationships anymore, even when I try. I have a lot of problems finding women that I'm interested in because mm -hmm. um, a lot of, even like lesbians, they are kinky. And if they're not kinky, I can't do it. I don't care. You know, it's just not going to work. And yeah. Or, I, or, or maybe just the ones I'm meeting, I don't know, I can't make assumptions about lesbians. I'm just saying in my general experience, I'm just not finding kinky people that I'm interested in who are women. And so I do end up with um, a lot of men who can handle my kink. They just can't handle me, but they can handle the kink part. Oh, well, they just kind of have to handle you. Like, that's their job. They'll get over it. They can try. Many have men have died trying. <laughs> well, the stories that you can tell, I'm probably sure. I, I, I don't think I'd ever go back to being in a, or, or looking for like a traditional non kink, non poly, uh, relationship. It's it's. This works in a way that. You saw relationships work on TV before. You know, spanking your wife became, like, a thing you shouldn't do. Right. Lots of people were in DS relationships, and lots of them worked really well, and everyone was happy. And I, I realized, like, now as a, as a motor that that was actually true. It's not just, like, the, oh, they were being abused, they were being undermined, they were this, they were that. A lot of them actually enjoyed it, and that's fine because people like being submissive. Yeah, like, if, if the whole conservative Christian people would just admit that they like DS, where the man is the dom and the woman is the slave, I could actually get behind it better than if they mm -hmm. try to tell me it's the way I need to be or the way the world works, because it's not true. You, like, so many men are submissive, so many women are dominant, so many mm -hmm. people are both or neither, you know? Mm -hmm. I just You just can't make me believe that anymore. I don't care how many examples you give me from whatever. And it, it, it's so improbable that in this world of billions and billions and billions of people that there's only one way to live. Are you effing kidding me? Yeah, and I'm pretty much going to do what you tell me to, not to do anyway, so at least one of them ain't, which is me. So that fucks up your whole, um, you know, ultimatum, everybody is rule, because I'm exactly. telling you right now that it's me. Like, I'm telling you right now that I'm going to go and I'm going to have sex with my male boyfriend and we are going to, you know, be kinky and he might be bruised afterwards. But we will hug each other and we will have a great relationship and fuck you and your morals. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I'll have to tell you sum it up. That's it. Yep, basically. Fuck him. But <laughs> I, I think that's a really good place to end there. Um, so before we sign off for the broadcast part... Uh, go ahead and tell people where they can find all of your stuff. Okay, if you are on FetLife, you can find me, Jackie Grio, and I also have Perverts of Color on FetLife. I'm on Tumblr, pervertsofcolor.tumblr.com, and you can find out about the Carter Johnson Leather Library by going to leatherlibrary.org. And I will have more fun stuff for you soon. Oh, and you should also go to weekendreunion.com. It is an awesome national black BDSM conference that is happening in June. I'm going to be there as the host of the twerk contest because my life is that good. I mean, you are lucky as all hell, I will say that. Where is it? Yeah, it's going to be in Maryland. And this is the second year, but um, it's, it's an amazing conference. And so you should definitely check it out. God, you know what? I wish I was not so poor. I'm trying really, really hard to get out of Michigan to go to, like, conferences and things because I feel like I'm at this point in my career where that's the thing I need to start doing. I need to start networking with people more. If you can get out here, you can get to the events on um, as a volunteer, and usually there's discounts. So if you can get the travel cost and if you can maybe surf on some couches or something, mm. you can work out. That's how I did it a lot of times is I would surf on couches and try to network with people 
and try to be a volunteer. So. Well, who knows? After my summer of collaborations on LTSX, I might just have a lot of couches I can actually sleep on. Hey, you can come to Baltimore. I got room. You can bring your boo. Hey, girl. Yay. Hey. Like, oh, you know what? We could have both of our submissives clean your house. That'd be wonderful. Are you kidding me? That's a great idea. Oh. I do love having him go out and do other stuff for other, other doms. I think that's so enjoyable. No, I think it is, too. That's one of the things my leather mom taught me was that um, one of the best ways you can train your sub is to loan them to other people under a contract for a certain amount of time mm -hmm. because and they're going to learn those skills that the other person has, and they can take that back with you. They may learn something new, or at the very least, they'll get an appreciation for you and how you do stuff because they don't want to do it that way. Exactly. Yeah, so that's definitely one of the things I promote a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Uh, I guess we're going to end the podcast now.